Good. How many of you know that God is worthy? Amen. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Whether the church is packed or whether the church is empty, God is worthy. Whether it's cold outside or whether it's hot outside, God is worthy. No matter what we go through, God is worthy.
You are here. We glorify your name. You are here to give blessings as we are standing in the need. You are here to give and we're here to receive. Speak now, Lord. Speak right now. In the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together with God. Word, word. And let's word. 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 Praise God. The Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 His glory Amen. is filling the temple. Amen. Amen. We stand before you just grateful today that God is who he said he is. He's everything we need. Amen. We thank God for being all that he is. Amen. We're going to move into our scripture reading and prayer. If there's one here today that has a scripture you would like to read this morning, the house is open for scripture reading and prayer. Amen. Will there be one to read your favorite passage of scripture this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon, I hope not Deacon Griggs, always ready. Deacon Griggs is going to lead us into scripture. And I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Vance to lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. And while they're coming, uh, we'll get into these announcements later, but while they're coming, we want to make sure that we are keeping up in, in uh, accordance with our social distancing guidelines. I see everybody is sitting at least a few feet or a couple of rows away from everyone, so we want to make sure we are practicing our guidelines. Amen. All right, I'm going to be coming to you from Acts. We'll be the scripture today. From Acts 2, 1 to 4. And it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Yes, yes. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came yes, sir. from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Yes. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated, separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other yes, tongues yes. as the Spirit enabled them. I thank you for that. I read uh, Acts 1 through, Acts 2, 1 through 4. Hearing of his holy word, his word. I'm going to read to you from Michael, starting at the first, first chapter and first verse. It's Michael, first chapter, starting at the first verse. You'll find these words to say it. Word of the Lord that came to Micah of Morse in the in the days of King Joanne, Jotham, and Ahaz, and uh, and Hezekiah of Judah, which he saw concerning Samar, Samaria, in Jerusalem. Listen, O word, and all this it is in it. And let the Lord be a witness against you. The Lord formed his, his holy temple for, for lo, the Lord is coming out of, out of his, his place and will come down and, and tread upon the high places of the end of earth. Then the mountains will, will merit under him, and the valleys will burst open like wax near the fire, like water poured down a, a, a steep place. All this is, is for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? It's a... Is it, is it not... Is it not Samaria? And, and what is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore I make 
makes Samaria a heap in the, in the open country, a place for planting vineyards. I will pour down her, her stones into her valley and uncover her foundations, and all her images shall be beaten to pieces. All the wages shall be burned. Burned with fire, and, and all her all her idols I will lay waste. For as, as the wages as the wages of, of, of a prostitute, she she gathers them as a as as the wages of a prostitute they they shall again be used. I read to you from Michael one through seven. May the Lord have a blessing. Let's all stand. Let us go to the throne. To the bottom of the cross where his feet is. Concentrate on the Lord. Let the Lord, let the Lord know that you love him. Oh Lord, thou Lord. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord, according to your loving kindness. Blot out all our transgressions, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Sustain us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Help us to worship you the way we should, O oh God, because you're a mighty God, your everlasting God. Cleanse us from our sins right now, Lord. Make us whole, Lord. Keep our minds right, our hearts right. Because, Lord, only you and only you, Lord, have we sinned against. And we love you today, Lord, because you loved us first. Yes, Lord. Thank you for calling us, Lord. Thank you for being with us, Lord, in time of need, oh God. Bless right now, Lord, all our steps, each and every day. Touch right now, Lord. Thank you for your spirit in this place, Lord. We know that there's a little remnant of us today, but Lord, just like you did the three months in Gideon's army, Lord. All you ever use is a remnant. We just love it because your praise is still glorious and it's still big, just like it was 20,000 in this place. But we love you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus who hung blood and died on the cross. And we believe it right now, Lord, that you're coming back for us. You're coming back, Lord. Come, Lord, come. And we need you today, oh God. Give us new mercy and new grace each and every day. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, because, Lord, we're going to sin every day. But you still, your, your grace and mercy is still upon us, Lord. We thank you for that right now. Mighty God, you're worthy God. And we love you today. Even though things are not looking good in the world, Lord, you are you are an immutable God. And you never change. Even though everything else is changing, you're still God and you're still all by yourself. And you're still with us. We thank you for that today, Lord. We love you today, Lord. Lord. Protect our children, oh God. There's a mean world out here, Lord. 
uh, cage and took some pictures. And uh, first they were so proud. <laughs> it was good. So make sure you vote because, I mean, the, the thing is thick. Can somebody say thick? thick. There are six pages yes, yes, of people to choose and issues and decrees and Judge. covenants and judge. Six pages. It's two sided. There's three pages and each side is it's six or six. So don't wait until the last minute. Get your ballot and start you know, doing your research. And if you want to ensure that it gets delivered, I wouldn't mail it. Amen. Take it to a drop box and stick it in the drop box, and at least then you know that it can't get caught in the mail system. Amen. So make sure you vote. Amen. Also, due to the uh, increase in COVID-19 cases, I'm pretty sure many of you have heard our mayor, uh, Michael Hancock, give his address, especially in Denver, uh, COVID-19 is on the rise, so we want to make sure that we practice uh, protecting ourselves, amen. It's not just that uh, we want to protect other people, but we want to protect ourselves, amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So we want to make sure that we wear our, fan, our face masks, if you're not using a microphone, I know it is uncomfortable, and it, I think that's one of the reasons why I sweat so much. Wearing this thing is hard to, hard to, and this is a breathable one, amen. But uh, if you're not using the microphone, we ask that you please keep your masks on during the service. I know it's difficult. If you have to take your mask off, please just you know go to the back for whatever. But we ask that everybody, if you're not speaking or using a microphone, please keep your masks on. They're, they are mandatory. As a matter of fact, Mayor uh, Hancock stated the increase in the wearing of masks. And there are lots of other things that were in that address too. So if you didn't get a chance to read it, let me know and I'll try and send you the link that has that address in it. Uh, as we come in on Sunday mornings, we want to make sure we go through the double gray doors. Uh, so these are the single gray doors, and many of us come through these doors. But we want to make sure we come through the double gray doors because Sister Edna will be taking temperatures. She'll be taking temperatures. Amen. She'll be her hand back in the back. So if you've got a fever, please stay at home and watch online because we'll have to, we, we can't allow you to be in the sanctuary if you've got a fever. Uh, so I know that that's only one of the signs. So people may have it and don't even know it. Amen. Amen. But we want to make sure we protect ourselves. So please enter through the great doors as you come in wherever you park. I know it may be inconvenient, but we want to practice safety. So come through the great doors, the double great doors. It's right outside this door. You come in that door, and then you'll come this way. For those who do come in these great doors, make sure Sister Edna, let's go to her and make sure. So that I need to have my temperature taken. I make sure we come to go to her and get our temperatures taken. Everybody good with that? Amen. Amen. Also, we want to follow social distancing guidelines. I know we're a loving church, and that's one thing I love about our ministry. And I believe God's going to protect us. So but when you kiss each other and greet each other, don't, do, don't put no wet sugar on nobody, okay? Give them dry sugar. Give them the dry hug, the dry kiss. Man, we want to try and stay uh, six feet apart. So the way you're sitting now, every other row, beautiful. Let's make sure we can continue to practice that. Uh, we want to lift up the Chambers family. Let's keep the Chambers family in prayer. I was talking with Evangelist Bridget, and she didn't mind me sharing because she wants our prayers. Uh, they took her father, uh, Brother Vernon, to uh, the hospital, and he uh, was diagnosed as having COVID. And then we found out that Sister Doris Chambers, she has COVID-19 as well. But God is so awesome because she is exhibiting no signs, no heavy breathing, no fever. She's doing well, so I thank God for uh, his, his blessings, even in the midst of what should be amen. other people are experiencing. Amen. So we know that uh, Mother Chambers and Brother Vernon are older. Uh, they're more mature saints, and it's uh, really devastating when our more mature saints. Amen. But thank God she's not experiencing any sickness or at all. And Evangelist Bridget was tested negative, praise God. But because she is at home taking care of them, she has willingly agreed not to come into the mist. And I thank God for that. I thank God for people who uh, just want to be have the welfare of others in mind. Amen. So she agreed to stay away. And you know how Sister Evangelist Bridget loves the church. 
So she's hurting because she can't be here with us, but she's taking care of mom and dad, so keep them in prayer. Amen. The food bank grant, we have not heard anything yet. As you may remember, we applied for a food bank grant. They initially turned us down because the need was so great. That was the, the reason they gave us so many other people were applying for it. So I asked them to reconsider, and we have not heard anything back yet. So please keep praying that God's will will be done. Amen. Now, I believe that's all the, there was another announcement that I have. It'll come to me later. Amen. But I thank God for all we thank you. Thank God for uh, just all the beautiful faces that are here. Some faces I haven't seen in a while. Good to have my sister Tasha in the house and her daughter Jasmine. Amen. 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 I think everybody else is at home. I mean, we're going to have other announcements from First Lady. First Lady's going to come with any other announcements we may have. Amen. Good morning, church. Oh, yeah. Good morning. 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 Exhibited and how Jesus Christ was our good Samaritan and how he rescued us. Amen. Amen. So tune in at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. Monday, we are still having Bible study tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. We're studying from the book of Romans. It has been such a rich lesson. I'm telling you, God just brings stuff out and reveals stuff and puts us on fire. It's just so great to come. Um, if you can't come in person, then catch us online. But just come on out and be near the fire. It's a little warmer there. Yeah. Amen. Um, again, all of our online uh, donations are um, accepted, either online or in person. Um, cash App at G GWCF Ministries. This is getting like, um, <laughs> At PayPal and Venmo. Um, tonight is our conference call, the leadership conference call. We will be calling at 6 o'clock, uh, meeting virtually between 6 and 7 p.m. this evening. Um, I know we started a little later, so it's going to come up a little quicker. So just keep in mind, set a timer if you need to on your phone or your, your watch. We have all these electronic devices that help remind us of this and that. Let's use it. On Saturday will be the um, Singles Ministry. I think that uh, evangelists may have some more, evangelist Gina may have some more to, to, to discuss on that, and I'll let her come um, in just a moment. On the 31st, we have Sweet Hollow Eve movie night, Amen. and we're gonna do it as a matinee. Usually we do the trick or trunk. I, I probably said it wrong, the trick or trunk. And what we're proposing is that we have it for our youth where they can trick or treat within the building. And that way it'll be a safe environment for them. So if you have any candy, bring your candy. Um, have your little ones dress up in holy costumes if they want to dress up. But we'll just have it within the building and we'll also have our movie night What's on the movie? 31st. What's the movie? The movie is Coco. Uh-uh. <laughs> We're not trying to run anybody out here. <laughs> so the movie is uh, Coco. Um, it, it has to do with the... Um, the um, thank you. It's, yes, but she said it is, it's a cultural um, a tradition that recognizes those who went on before us. I'm sorry. If we're not doing that either. <laughs> um, here now from Grand Miss Jimmy Scott. Give her a hand for you. Good morning, church. Good morning. So I was informed that there is a funeral here on Saturday. It is lasting until approximately 4 p.m. So I am um, presented with the decision as to make it a, a little later on Saturday or to have it on Friday instead. 
There has been some interest for Friday from different people, but I don't get off work usually until about four or so. Um, I might be able to get off early and be at the church, maybe at 4.30. So if you could just, if you're interested in coming to the game night, please see me after church so that I can just get a general idea of who's gonna be there and then I can speak with Brother Fred about um, which day we'll be here for that game. Amen? Amen. 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 And my little sister Mary is coming uh, on yesterday. I, I'm not sure if this is what she's going to talk about tonight. Oh, it is. Okay. Let her come. Thank you for all the ladies that showed up in the Good Afternoon Church. Good afternoon. We went to the self-awareness, self-defense class yesterday. All had our masks on. Sister Connie brought her cane. I thought we were going to practice with the cane, but we didn't, which is probably a good thing. Um, but it was so much fun. So I appreciate everybody coming and practicing. We all wore our masks. I got a little dizzy after, but that's because I forgot to eat and ran around all day. So that's a learn. Um, hopefully we can do that again, and I know there's going to be more discussions, perhaps maybe a youth night and a game night, actually at the facility, kind of teach the youth some information as well. So it was just such a blessing, and I had such a good time. So yeah. it was a rough day yesterday for me personally, and I needed a distraction, and it was like the best distraction. It was just awesome. So thank you guys. If you want to practice, we can use we don't even have to ask for volunteers, we're going to get some other guys to play. <laughs> we'll show you some moves later. <laughs> and one thing I also wanted to mention is next Sunday after the service, we're still having our potato bar. So we'll have green potatoes and then all the toppings. I know there's a sign of sheet last week. I may have it in my car. I apologize for not bringing it in. Um, if you need a reminder, I'll send out an email this week with everything that everyone signed up for. And um, hopefully we'll be able to come and enjoy some food for next Sunday. Thank you. Awesome. Thank God for our women's ministry, um, stepping up the bar and not just doing something inside the church or doing something church related, but getting together as a church and showing the world how to handle things and how to have fun as a church family. And the, the turnout was pretty good. I know that the picture you really can't, it doesn't do you justice. And if I were to turn this around, it, it's better in color, but you really couldn't see it from the distance you're sitting. But it's good to have um, uh, such a good turnout. So I'm thankful uh, to God that our women's department, Sister Mary's guidance, uh, established that outgoing event, and it was wonderful. So thank you so much. Amen. Also, I'm so proud of our food and dining ministry uh, as a whole. They're feeding us good, and I thank God for them. Um, <laughs> Hats off to our food and dining ministry. I am so sorry. I also want to mention that we raised over a hundred dollars yesterday. Wonderful. What a blessing. Any other announcements? We have an announcement from our Yaya department. Anybody know what Yaya stands for? Youth. Young adult. Yeah. Youth and young adults, amen. Ms. Tabitha Jones is the ministry leader over the Yaya department. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh -huh. Hello, hello, church. Um, so I know I said that I was going to bring flyers, but I'm going to email them. I have I sent them an email out. Hopefully, everyone gets it. Um, just to save paper, and I think it'll be easier for people to just keep the information. Um, if you're not on the email list, or if you need the the flyer about the IRS Christmas explosion, uh, please let me know. Um, and it has like again, it has like the dates of the date of the explosion, the dates for practicing, the dates for rehearsal, and it also has my contact information if you need anything from me. Um, so yeah, if there's anything that you need, just come to me and let me know. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Tabitha.
getting ready to hear the word of God, so I pray that you would pray for me and keep uh, Reverend Tony lifted up in prayer. Uh, Reverend Tony was going to deliver the message uh, this morning, but he called and or he texted me. He's, he's got some tremendous health issues that he's wrestling with, uh, pain that's keeping him from in the bed and keeping him from turning his neck. So I pray that you would pray for him and um, just keep him lifted up because God is able. I believe he's going to go see his specialist or a doctor on Tuesday to see what's going on. So keep Reverend Tony lifted up in prayer. Amen. We have a special, awesome uh, vocalist coming this morning to lift up the name of Jesus and to lift our spirits. I'm so thankful for this young sister. No, I'm not going to say it. It's not me. It's not me. But we have one of our uh, very close friends in the ministry, uh, Sister uh, Tasha's daughter, whose name is Jasmine. Miss Jasmine has a beautiful voice. A couple of Sundays ago, I was able uh, to come in, and I was at the door, and as I was at the door, I heard this melodious sound, and when I came in, it stopped. <laughs> and so I asked her, I said, who was that singing? And it was Sister Jasmine. And so uh, I asked her to sing something else. She took a moment and prayed for the Holy Spirit to move. And as soon as she opened her mouth, I immediately went into prayer mode. It was beautiful. So she is going to come now and to render the selection uh, song of preparation. So let us put our hands together and give God praise for the
Amen. Thank you, Sister Jasmine. I think we all wanted a piece of that one. Amen. Thank you for blessing our souls with that song. Let's pray. Eternal God, we bless your name. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people to preach your word. Lord, I thank you that, uh, Father, that you hold our hands and you know our names and that you walk with us and you talk with us and, Lord, you guide us along the way. We're so grateful, Father, to you that you that you know our names, Master. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life because we trust you for salvation, because we have repented of our sins, we ask you to forgive us, and because we trust that you are the Son of God, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and there is nothing that can separate us from your love, neither death, nor height, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a name. You've given us a name that not even the angels have. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for saving us. Thank you. Lord, we pray now that you would just continue to be in our midst as we uh, go into your word. We pray, Lord, that as we allow the word, Lord, to be read, that your word would go into us. Lord, we pray for a mighty move of God. We pray right now, Lord, in the spirit of the living God, Lord, you would have your way in the house today. Second chapter 3, speak to your people's hearts. Lord, we pray that we would leave better than we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Don't plan on being before you long. Um, the material that I believe God gave you, it's probably only four or five hours, so it shouldn't I should take us right into the, the conference and then we can just all be here. <laughs> From Leviticus, Old Testament, Old Testament, Leviticus, the 10th chapter, and verses 1 and 2. Leviticus. Somebody say Leviticus. Leviticus. <laughs> it's one of those books we hardly ever, I mean, hardly ever heard preached from. And I know these, uh, the first five books, which this is one of the first five books of the Bible, the word of God was spoken specifically to the children of Israel. And even though this word is found and created and tailored to them, we still can gain some nuggets out of it. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would breathe a word fresh way. Leviticus, the 10th chapter, verses 1 and 2. The word of God says from the King James Version, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his sense, his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out from fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. The NIV version says, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Just for a short while, we want to speak from this thought. Strange fire. Strange fire. Amen. Strange fire. Amen. How many of you would agree, as I do, that our world, for the most part, a significant part of our world is on fire? Amen. Amen. Just, just look, just look around the globe. Look around the globe. The Amazon fires, uh, the most devastating fires in decades, are occurring in the Amazons. Is this a controlled fire? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not controlled. It's, it's a strange fire. Even here in Colorado, we have no. Don't have to look too far. Just look at our very own backyard. Um, 
There is this, it starts with the C, the letter C, the something peak fires. Somebody help me out, what's the letter C stand for? It's, uh, it'll come to me later, but it's a fire that starts, it's in the city or town, it starts with letter C, something peak fire. I was reading the last night that it is the most significant historical fire that Colorado has ever known. Coincidence? I don't think so. It's a strange fire. There's the Cowwood fire also here in Colorado, in our very own backyard. There are people being evacuated from their homes because of this fire. And this fire is making people leave their homes. Is this normal? I don't think so. It's a strange fire. Don't even talk about the fires that are in California that are burning over a million acres in a month. Amen. Is it a common fire? No, it's a strange fire. Or at least it's uncommon. Things that uh, we have never heard of are beginning to happen and happen in massive and enormous rates, uh, not to mention COVID. COVID-19 has killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions. Fires everywhere. Somebody is talking. Are we listening? And while we're talking about fires, I might as well go ahead and say uh, that in 2 Peter chapter 3, round verse 10, it talks about the world being destroyed by fire. Now, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I know there are other things that need to occur before the Lord cracks the sky and comes back for his people. All right. But there's another passage of scripture that also says, uh, though Jesus is speaking, and he says, I'm coming back to destroy the world with fire, and what will happen if it's already kindled when I get here? Huh. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. We need to get ourselves together and get ourselves right because Jesus is coming back soon. You hear, I know, we've heard it. We've heard this for what, 100 years? Oh, 100 years. We've heard it for at least 50. Anybody here over 100 years old? And we've heard this for at least all my life. Jesus is coming back. Jesus, but when is he coming? He's given us an opportunity and space to get our lives right. He doesn't want any of us to be lost but he wants all to come to repentance and to be saved. So when we talk about uh, these fires that are occurring on the earth, not only is that a strange fire, but God wants us to take note of some other strange fires that are happening spiritually that we can't see. It's a strange fire. It's a strange fire when we declare that God is our Savior and our Lord and our Keeper, but yet our lives don't demonstrate that we know him. That's a strange fire. And God wants us to be on the lookout that there may be some things, some smoke, some symbols of fire that are getting ready to brew, that are showing on the outside that the inside has been full of turmoil and restlessness and hopelessness because we see the smoke and where there is smoke, there is fire. Is something burning in your life? Is something burning? And there's a good burn and there's a bad burn. Jeremiah said that the word of God inside of me is like fire shut up in my bones. And if I tried to be quiet, I couldn't. I have to proclaim it from the mountaintops that God is good. But then there's that other kind of fire that's secretly destroying our lives. And we see the smoke, but we don't know that there's fire underneath because things are being burned and we don't recognize it because we're not spiritually in tune to what's going on. God is telling us to open our eyes because it's the, his return is sooner than we think and we need to be prepared. So while we're here, this is a great time for invitation. How do we know that we're saved? How do we know that our lives are going to be uh, in God's hands no matter what happens to us? If we walk out here today, walk out of this building today, and get hit by a bus, <laughs> amen, I laugh because 
every time we watch a movie, I always say, they're about to get hit by a bus. Here it comes. Watch it. They're going to get hit by a bus. And then the one time I was, we were watching this movie, and it was, there was no way in the world these people could get hit by a bus. They, they were floating around in the air, casting swords, and here comes this bus out of nowhere and hits them. And that's the one time I didn't say they're going to get hit by a bus. But what would happen to our lives if we walked out here today and we got hit by something and our lives were in jeopardy and stayed in the last life? Are we assured? Are we ready to meet our maker? And if we're not, I'm glad you're here today because we, if you can leave here with the understanding that you can be saved, don't have to be perfect, but you can be saved. How am I saved? It's not by works, but it's by believing that Jesus Christ is your Savior, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he uh, was hung for our sins, that he was buried for our sins, that he got up early on Sunday morning for us, that he ascended back to the right hand of the Father, and that he's coming back for us again. If we repent of our sins, ask God and, and, and believe that, and try to live a life that pleases God, God says you are saved. You can have assurance that you're saved. And we don't have to worry about strange fire because God has given us his fire. Mm. Let's go a little deeper. As we look at Leviticus, because we don't talk about it too much, I just want to spend a little time on some background about the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus has been called the uh, sequence or the sequel to the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. In the book of Leviticus, we find instruction that God gave to Moses to give to the Israelites, teaching them about how worship is to be conducted what to do in the temple and the behavior of the people who are supposed to be God's people. So even though God was speaking to the Israelites, we can still glean some nuggets from this word. As we uh, uh, try to get this in context, I want to draw your attention to the eighth chapter of the, of the book of Leviticus. There you'll find the establishment and the ordination of the Aaronic priests, the Levites, the priests. And in this passage of the scripture, around the eighth, as the 8th chapter opens, and in the 8th chapter, it talks about how uh, God told Moses to ordain uh, Aaron and his sons to be the Levitical priests, and it was the establishment of the priesthood. And as that chapter gets ready to close, in the chapter 9, we find um, instructions. God gave the Aaron, Aaronistic, the priests, the Levites, he gave them specific instructions on how to worship him. He gave them specific instructions on how to present themselves before the Lord. He gave them specific instructions on how to give him honor, how to give him praise. And he says to them, basically, don't come to me any kind of way. Understand that I am God. God says, understand that I am God, and beside me there is no other. There is a prescribed way that we are to go before God. And if we try to give God some things that he doesn't want, he doesn't accept it. Are we trying to change, shift our, the sacrifices that God has required of us to give him something that we just want to push on him and make him accept because we're too lazy, spiritually lazy to give God the praise and the worship that he deserves? Are we trying to say to God, well, God, you know, I don't have time to give you what you require, so I'm going to give you what's left over. Take this and be happy with it. That's not the kind of sacrifice that God wants to receive. God only wants to receive a sacrifice that's prescribed and in order and the way he wants it. If we're not going to give God the praise he wants the way he wants it, then we might as well not even do it at all because he's not going to accept it. God doesn't accept praise that comes from blemished objects. God wants something that's unblemished. God wants something that's holy. God don't want no leftovers. We wouldn't even give leftover stuff to people we love. Why don't we give God leftover praise? And why don't we give God leftover worship? Why don't we give God leftover love? God wants some fresh stuff. God wants fresh stuff. He wants stuff that costs us something. Why would we present anything to God that doesn't cost us something? God wants us to understand that when we come before his throne, that we are coming before the king of the universe. 
that we are coming before the King of Kings, that we're coming before the Lord of Lords, that we're really coming before someone who is holy and someone who is mighty, and the angels all the way down in heaven is say, like, holy, 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 Hosanna is the highest. When we come before God, we need to understand we're coming before royalty. How dare we come to God and give him something that we wouldn't even want to take ourselves? God wants the best that we have. And if the best that we have is left over, then you accept it. But if we give the world our best, and then have nothing left over, and whatever crumbs and scrapings we can muster up, we give that to God in the form of love, in the form of giving him talents, in the form of giving him treasures, in the form of giving him of our service, God, don't even bring that to me. You know that's no good. We know in our hearts when we bring to God a sacrifice that's worth something. And of all the sacrifices that we could give God, the best sacrifice that he wants is us. Are we giving God us? Yes, he says, bring time into the storehouse that there may be me. Yes, he says, treat everybody with love and respect. Yeah. But what are we giving to him? Yeah. God says the best sacrifice you can give him is yourself. Amen. As a matter of fact, he, he gave himself. Amen. He gave us the best that he had because he died for us. Amen. The thing we can do for him is live for him. In the ninth chapter, Jesus, or God is telling the Levites, to, this is how I want it. Do it this way, gave the specific orders. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at the 16th verse of chapter 9, you'll see that uh, God had a specific way that the burnt offerings were supposed to be presented. God wanted things done decently in order. So at the end of chapter 9, when we get to the end of chapter 9, we find a big celebration going on. There's a celebration going on. Uh, the priests begin to anoint people, and the people begin to just cry out to God, and God's spirit just begins to fill the entire place. God's spirit is with them. And it's a glorious happening. It's a glorious happening because the, the, the priests, the leaders, they were leading the people in the correct way. And when the people saw that the leaders were doing what was right, they began to get in line and to fall in suit. And they began to worship and praise God. And so I just want to spend just a little time talking to our leadership here. Amen. If we as leaders, talking to myself, if we as leaders lead right, then people will follow right. But if the leaders don't lead right, then people certainly aren't going to follow right. So it's up to our leadership team to make sure that we're leading in the right way. And all of our ministry leaders, I, I would like for us all just to take just a second to ask ourselves, Am I leading the way God wants me to lead? And better yet, ask this question. Would I follow me if I were leading? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ask yourself, would you follow yourself if you were leading? Amen. And if your answer is like mine, all of us got some work to do. Amen. We all got some work to do. So I want to speak to all of our leaders, especially uh, since tonight at 6 o'clock happens to be our ministry call. I would like for all ministry leaders to call in to just say hello if you don't say anything else. And then all ministry leaders, you have the information in your program. So if you leave an area of ministry and you're here today, uh, please call at 6 o'clock. Okay. Amen. Because not, it's going to be a strange fire. <laughs> Amen. Strange fire. So as we get to chapter 10, this is where we pick up in our, in our verses here. Uh, the, the NIV version says, so, you know, at, they're on the mountaintop, they're having a great time, worship is high, they're praising God, and look what happens here in verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. So let's go a little bit deeper. So Aaron uh, had these two sons. These are his oldest sons, uh, Nadab and Abihu. And it was their duty. They had been commanded by Aaron to go into the temple to prepare the fire. 
because in the temple, you were the, the, the fire was never to go out. So they were to prepare the fire. And as they prepared the fire, no doubt, they thought to themselves, man, this got to be a shortcut. Look, why do I have to do things the way God, uh, these, there are too many rules. Why do I got to do it this way? I tell you what I'm going to do. Instead of getting the coal from the right place, I'm going to get it from where it's, you know, it's, less, it's more convenient for me to get it. And instead of giving the sacrifice at the prescribed time, I'm going to do it when it's convenient for me because, you know, I'm busy and i got too much stuff to do. So, I mean, if God wants me to serve him, he's going to have to have me serve him on my time. I don't want to serve him on his time because he's he requiring too much. And then possibly there's some other things. They could have been drunk. Amen. They could have been drunk. And we, we don't know. We can't speculate. The Bible doesn't say. But whatever it is, whatever they did wrong, we know it was something wrong because we can't even get out of verse 1 good without it saying that whatever they did before the Lord, he commanded them not to do it. And they knew. Don't do this. It's, how many of you have children or have had some children? Amen. Or and you still have children, and they could be a little older now. Thank God for older children who know how to act. Praise God. But when they were younger, and sometimes still today, when they were younger, you know, you try to tell them do this or don't do that. And what's the first thing they do? Ex exactly opposite of what you told them to do. And it just irks you to no end to have a disobedient child. Now we may have thought I was talking about us and children but I'm talking about God and us. God gives us commands and it irks him to no end when we don't obey the commands he gives. He, it's just like us with our children. So he gave them prescribed ways to do this. I want you to set the fire in this one, but they said, no, let's take some shortcuts. And because they took shortcuts, God said that the fire that they tried to offer to him was a strange fire. It was strange. It was foreign to him. Now, the Hebrew word for this strange fire is an unauthorized or foreign or fame. Are we giving God unauthorized praise? Are we giving God feigned praise? Are we giving God worship that he has not prescribed? Well, how do we know if we're praising God correctly? If our hearts and our minds are attuned to God and the Spirit, and we are letting the Holy Spirit lead us into praise and worship that we're giving God the praise that he wants. But when we come into God's house, after he blesses us to have slept good, and woke us up to a beautiful morning, put food on our table, gave us transportation to get to church, may have been late when we got here, but we had transportation to get here, able to walk out of that vehicle on our own, get into the sanctuary, God, it's almost three o'clock. I wish you would finish. That's a strange, that's strange fire to God. The God who loved us enough to give his son to die for our sins. The least we could do when we get into his worship, that place of worship, to give him thanks. And to say, Lord, I'm grateful. I love you. Thank you for your security. Thank you for it. How many of us needed something and God gave it to us? And now we have spiritual amnesia. Amen. God blessed us with something, something that we couldn't live without. And then God blessed us with it. And now we forgot that He gave it to us. Spiritual amnesia. That's a strange fire. God says that He's given us talents and treasures. And when we sit on our talents, when we sit on our treasures, when we sit on the things that God has blessed us with to be a blessing to him, God says that's a strange fire. When we give to God and we mark on our envelopes, I'm paying a tithe to God, and we know good and well that ain't no 10%. That is a strange fire to God. When we claim that God is our life source, when we claim that he is our all in all, and we say that I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and body, and we cuss our brothers and sisters out who we see every day. That's a strange fire to God because God says, how can you say you love me when you've never seen me, but yet you see your brother and sister every day, and
and you act like you don't even know them, you don't give to them, you don't provide for them, you talk dirty about them. God says that's a strange fire. God wants us to be on the lookout for strange fires, things that don't line up with his will. Whenever God uh, uh, wants us to come to him in a prescribed way, and we try to take shortcuts, know that that's a strange fire and that's something that God does not ordain. If we're bringing to God blemished praise, blemished worship, unholy worship, keep it. Just keep it. We need to keep it because God is not going to accept that from us. But the word of God says he is near to them who are of a contrite spirit. He wants to come close to those who are broken hearted. When we come to God in a humble manner, that's the kind of worship that he will receive. And that's not a strange fire to God. Let us be careful to make sure that what we sacrifice to God, that it costs us something, and that it's not a strange fire to him. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for your word today. We ask now, Lord, that you would hide your word in our hearts and help us, Lord, not to sin before you or others. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us and to purify us. Lord, the things that we have presented to you that were tainted, that were not prescribed the way that you wanted them, Lord, we ask you to forgive us, cleanse us, wash us, regenerate us, make us holy, and use us for your glory. Father God, help us to present to you only the fire that you have ordained and not strange fire. We thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask First Lady to come and to give the invitation. Amen. Today would have been an evangelist Bridget's day to give the invitation. I know she's probably watching now. The man is Bridget Chambers. God, we pray for you. God bless you. This is the time in the service where we call um, opening the doors of the church, meaning that anyone who does not have a covering or a church home is welcome to join in with God's Will Christian Fellowship. The first plea is for anyone who does not know the Lord in the part of their sins. He does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, does not know about what he's done for you on Calvary, then you want to come now. You want to come now. The next plea that we have is for someone who does not have a church home. And it appears that the majority of us are at home. But if you feel like you don't have a church home and you want to rededicate or you want to come forward, you're welcome to come now. At God's Little Christian Fellowship, we accept everyone like family, will love on you, will teach you what God teaches us. Whatever revelation that we have, we reveal it to you.
need him to do, not that he's a genie, but he's the God that hears our concerns, and he's the God that hears from his children. And if you are a child of God, and you feel that you don't have the words to say, and don't know how to pray, we can pray with you God's word. We believe God for the miracle. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne realizing, Lord, that you told us that we could come boldly before your throne to find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. So we come right now, Lord, as your word says that we can come boldly knowing, Lord, that you're not only going to hear our prayers, but, Lord, that you're going to answer our prayers. And, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for, for first of all, being all that you are. Lord, we know that we could, could begin calling your name, but it wouldn't be sufficient. So right now, Lord, we'll just call you El Shaddai, because you are all sufficient. And, Lord, we know that everything we need is found in you because you're all sufficient. Lord, everything that we can hope for is found in you because you're all sufficient. Lord, healing for parents is found in you because you're all sufficient. Lord, we know that salvation is found in you because you're all sufficient. Lord, we know that you can take away the feeling of being drowned because all things are in you and you are sufficient. Father God, we pray that we know that you are a rescuer because you are all sufficient and all things are found in you. Lord, we know that the burdens of heaviness can be lifted because all things are found in you and you are the all-sufficient God. You're the all-sufficient God who can take away grief. You're the all-sufficient God who can take away depression. You are the all-sufficient God who can take away hopelessness. Lord, you are the all God, who can take away the feeling of being left alone. Father God, you're the all-sufficient God, and we know we can find everything in you. So we pray right now, Lord, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free, that you would save to the utmost, that you would bring salvation to those who are seeking you. We pray, Father God, that you would allow your spirit of love and compassion to be felt among your saints. Lord, someone needs to know that you're God, show yourself strong, that you will show yourself mighty, that you will show yourself almighty, that you will show yourself because you are all sufficient. We thank you, Lord, that everything we need is in you. Thank you, Lord, for answering every prayer affirmatively, that you might get the glory, and that your people might receive, Lord, the things that you're asking for.
couple of guests. If you would, don't mind filling out a guest registration card so that we can get your contact information. Uh, we send out scriptures on a weekly basis, or at least at least once a week, uh, to let you know what's going on in the ministry. And I'd love to put your names on that list. If you do have that card and you're here today, just drop it in the uh, offering box. Amen. Again, thank you so much for your patience and uh, your your uh, yeah your patience. That's the right word. I know we had some difficulty with our service this morning and uh, change in schedule. So I want to thank you for being flexible. And give yourself some praise for being flexible. Amen. Um, I was able to sit in this morning on um, their speaker, uh, Brother Robinson. Wonderful job. I got a chance to meet him on yesterday. Uh, definitely, I love his spirit. He's humble. And he definitely knows the word of God. So I thank God for that. For that. Amen. We're going to have our offering now, so if you're prepared to give, um, we're just going to do this expeditiously because I know the time is late. So if you're prepared to give, just bring your offering on forward. If you need an envelope, we can get one for you. So just all over the building, just begin to bring your offering forward. And then again, we want to thank uh, Sister Jasmine. Jasmine Gray, is it maybe? No, Anderson. Anderson. We want to thank uh, Jasmine Anderson for blessing our hearts with that rendition yeah. of one of my favorite songs. We need that little piece of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And what I love about it is, I, I love our ministry. You know, I don't have to go and beg people to do stuff. People volunteer to do some stuff, and so I am so grateful. And the evangelist, I believe she sent me a text. Yeah, it was a text. She made a text message saying, uh, my niece wants to sing a song, I said, Rick, come on, let the baby, come on, let the baby sing, let the baby sing. So she did a marvelous job, and I thank God for her. Thank God for Brother Don Wayne and these great musicians. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Brother Don Wayne and Brother Mark uh, Bonros on bongos, congos. Thank God for uh, Brother Tobias on drums. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Jones on bass. Thank God for all of our vocalists. Praise God for Madison Jean and Pastor Vance. Uh, First Lady, Vance Purdy. Keep her family in prayer too. She sent a text that was asking for prayer. Uh, Brother Michael Johnson had a procedure on his back. Please keep Brother Johnson in prayer. Um, amen. Reverend Tony, thank you. Yes, Reverend Tony has got some uphill challenges, so please keep him in prayer. And the Chambers family. Amen. Let us stand. We're going to have the benediction statements and we're going to meet the party all at the same time because it's time to go on. Amen. 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 Uh, anybody want to read the benediction statements? While you're coming, and Pastor Vance is going to read them, Dean Graham is going to say a quick word over the offering. We'll pray over the offering and Pastor Vance is coming. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, we thank you for the offering, Father God. We ask that you want to find, Father God. We ask that you use it for whatever you need to use it for in your kingdom, Father God. And if you do this, we'll be so mine. We give your name praise and thanks for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's do the benediction, affirmation. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will. God promises blessings for doing his will. God promises blessings for doing his will. Blessing will overtake me when I do God's will. Blessing will overtake me when I do God's will. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed when I go out. I am the head and not the tail. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I am above only and not beneath. I am what God said I am. I am what God said I am. I'm here spiritually. I'm here physically. I'm here physically. I'm here financially. I'm here mentally. I'm here mentally. I'm healed emotionally. I'm healed emotionally. And I believe God. I believe God. I am saved. I am saved. I am the child of the Most High God. I am the child of the Most High God. I am what God said I am. I am what God says I am. I am blessed. 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 The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will. Amen. Amen.